Good afternoon, YouTube. Today I am going to give you a little bit of a update into a CNC machine that I've been slowly trying to build for months and months and months. Um, actually, for months it was in storage, so I wasn't working on it, but I digress. Uh, back to the crucial information that we all want to know about. What is this? Well, it's a steel frame. I got all the steel for free. Cha ching uh, It's a four foot, uh, so 48 inches wide by four foot base. Uh, it's actually longer than four feet. It's uh, 51 inches, so it's three inches longer. Uh, no reason for that. No harm. No no harm. No foul. Right. I'm trying to increase the surface area to compensate for this big lunker up here. Uh, in total, this all like take it'll take up like 10 inches. This router would be hanging so far out it'll be crazy. Uh, I might end up rebuilding this entire thing. Who knows? I've, I've actually already... Uh, this is the second one. I built this one first out of steel and then I thought well maybe I'll switch it to aluminum. but. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, I wanted a four foot by four foot machine. I already have a smaller machine that's like little piddly thing, like one foot by one foot. But hey, it does the job. Uh, I can actually stretch, uh, stretch it out to to a work area of it's about eleven inches by thirteen inches. So, that's that's pushing it. Pretty small. It's a thirty forty CNC from China. If you look them up, they're all the same. So, uh, with this, I built uh, a bottom y-axis. The y-axis has these linear rails that, you, obviously, you can't really see much in the video, so I'm just being descriptive. This is a descriptive thing here. Um, in the future, I'll show in greater detail what I'm talking about now, but this is just a primer, an update, if you will. So, the bottom y-axis uh, is what the x-axis travels on. The x-axis is what the z or z-axis travels on. I'm Canadian, so I suppose I should say z, z-axis. I uh, have built it. Uh, you actually can hear some things falling apart because it's not really put together at the moment. Um, so I built this all out of scrap metal, as I said, and it's uh, it's all very rigid steel. This here is uh, still a work in progress because I need to uh, weld this fully supported rail sits on a piece of steel that needs to be welded to this top and there still needs to be support brackets welded in the back so it's going to need like a chunk of angle iron welded in the back here and there like four of them across the length and then welded in between or something and that's going to I'm not going to do that until I true up until I, until I know that these two rails are 100% in line with each other the full way because this is my my top is basically a floater rail until I get it uh, properly set up and then I know it's going to stay there, right? And the same thing goes for the two bottom rails on the y-axis. They are not welded, or actually, maybe they are. I don't know. I, I, probably, I probably zapped a few welds down there, but they still need support uh, underneath, like, like I said, like chunks of uh, angle iron. That can be welded in underneath, uh, in like about four, four or so different positions, and that'll strengthen everything up quite well. Because uh, that kind of support, you want you want it so it doesn't flex. And right now, it's basically it's it's allowed to flex until I tune it, right? So I'm, so I might even have to go so far as to uh, put like um, some sort of tensioning system in there where I can actually have like um, two wedges that when I screw one in 
it like pushes outwards, right? And that could be a tensioning system for the rail because it might have some shit going on. It's actually not really, uh, it's not the same as the, as the square rails, the round rails. The round rails provide a little bit of rotation, so as long as that, as long as it's straight, then it's going to be pretty much fine. But, because um, you can get, in the square rails, you can get some binding action if, if something goes out of, wha out of whack, like halfway down the rail. It'd be going parallel like this. Do some weird dance. Yeah. Anyways, um. Uh, so fully supported uh, rails, they have uh, recirculating ball bearing bearing blocks, which are pretty decent. Uh, my Z axis is actually, it's also, I didn't pay for any of the metal, but uh, I, in this kit, what I did pay for was the, the linear rails, the ball screws, which this is an example of a ball screw right here. It's got this thing that, that rotates and it's got a really wide thread. And there's ball bearings inside of this that actually recirculate in a spiral pattern. So it's very solid. Uh, you get these ball, you get these bearings for the ends of it. And it basically sits nice and rigid and it provides uh, these linear rails with thrust back and forth. Um, and they're they're able to provide high torque. They might even multiply the torque. For all I know, I don't know, because um, they're they are like uh, inclined planes themselves, right? So, but uh, yeah. So I guess just to finish up on on the explanation or the update, let's if you will, it's um, still needs a lot of work here because underneath this plate there's uh, one of those ball screws and for some reason it likes to bind and uh, I just I'm gonna have to adjust things and tighten things up make sure everything's is square and stuff and such because when it's binding it's probably a result of something not lining up properly uh, just takes just takes work and in a proper machine shop it would be a lot easier but I just have my redneck machine crap here, so until maybe this thing, this thing would be able to uh, mill aluminum. A small one can mill aluminum. I just, I just don't. I do have a, a what's commonly referred to as the X2 uh, mini milling machine. It's my version is actually from a store called Princess Auto, and the brand is called Power Fist. Uh, in the United States, it would be called. Uh, Harbor Freight. Mine's blue. Harbor Freight would be red. S exact same machine. Exactly the same. They just painted it a different color. Um, so you can actually get a... Um, it's called a CNC Fusion Conversion Kit. Uh, CNC Fusion is a brand name and I believe they've gone out of business now. But you can still buy these fusion kits because the, that name almost seems to just get carried along right because you're fusing CNC with something that's manual and this and I paid about a thousand dollars for mine which they're a lot cheaper in the states they're like six hundred dollars for them but the dollar difference and such right uh, typically they're they're a lot cheaper of a machine but I do have one and I can turn it into a CNC machine that would have uh, a, a different so, a different quality of work area, but it would definitely be able to mill aluminum, no problem. I've actually, I used it for milling aluminum parts when I was doing an upgrade on my other CNC machine. I had to upgrade um, basically the spindle holder, and it was all just, just really cast aluminum crap that you couldn't take apart and modify, and I had to like literally chop it, cut grooves and make adapter plates and bolt one way and bolt the other way and it was just pain in the ass but I I ended up I literally bought that milling machine just so I could fix that so it's like I paid about a thousand dollars for my mini CNC machine and then I paid a thousand dollars for my mini manual milling machine and so far I've paid about uh, probably about 
could be almost about a thousand dollars because the so the linear motion kit for this was like five hundred dollars and the motors I've bought for the thing uh, was about three hundred dollars so for other things that I may have spent on it like uh, who knows you know like there's consumables for welding grinding drill bits uh, screws you wouldn't believe it some of these screws here cost a dollar each sometimes I just needed a screw on the weekend and I couldn't find one anywhere except for like Lowe's or wherever right and you go there and they charge you an arm and a friggin leg um, like buy the screw it was incredible and then I go somewhere else that's only open during weekdays and uh, I can buy an entire bag of screws like a hundred screws for like for like eight dollars or something right it's ridiculous so they really get you people complain about toilet paper of all things they're complaining about toilet paper when some places charge you a dollar a friggin screw what's that all about right I rant about that no problem so so uh, in my next video I want to get into greater detail about some of the construction that's went into my z-axis and the next steps that I plan on taking uh, for completion of my y-axis because I need to solidify the mounts for the ball screw end mounts their BK BK12 bearings is what they're called um, they uh, th once they're mounted I need to make a motor mount and then I, I'll have my uh, y-axis travel basically ready to go like once I have the motor mounted then I would have to hook up in my control box and stuff and then they'd be testing but I anticipate that my y-axis is going to travel very well uh, very smooth and I haven't uh, so so this what I was showing you here is actually going to go like this in behind so I'll have to figure out a way to weld or mount each of these blocks on each side and then on one side probably this side over here uh, this little nubbin is going to connect to a motor so it's going to be a I have a special kind of uh, adapter or a coupling that will that will attach one side to the other and then I'll have to have like about a two inch uh, box beam like what I have here I'm gonna make another piece and that's gonna mount the motor on and that's that's not a very good way of doing it but that's how I'm doing it because I have, I have limited materials at the moment and with this coronavirus and such and such I don't feel like going around and dying of the plague just looking for some scrap steel or whatever and uh, yeah that's the long short of it I I wanna try and uh, get a little bit more motivated in working on this. <laughs> I haven't been too motivated, uh, so maybe this video will help if anyone uh, cares to like, subscribe, comment, argue, troll. I'm open for whatever. Uh, you check out my other videos. I got I got plenty of videos that are just short little clips to make you laugh. That's all they are. Just uh, just me goofing around. Uh, sometimes I'll get an idea in my head and uh, I'll just make a quick little video about it with some sort of stupid filter. And it's it's most most of the time is for my own entertainment. But I, I thought, well, you know, instead of laughing at my own jokes all the time, maybe I'll try to share them. Who knows? Uh, yeah. And uh, so that concludes this video. And I hope uh, people tune in and they uh, look forward to future videos because I'm looking forward to producing them. It's been a while. I, uh, I don't know why. I just hard time getting into videography stuff. And this is just a, just a stab at it, you know, just kind of give it a stab. I don't know. That was really lame. But hey, improvement. And lots of room. Lots of ceiling for improvement. Have a great one, guys, and gals, and however, just cheers.